The late 60s and early 70s were synonymous with big cubic inch, high horsepower American muscle cars. Virtually every domestic manufacturer at this point was building cars with engine sizes over 400 cubic inches, and this competition birthed legendary machines such as the Hemi Cuda, the Boss 429 Mustang, and even some really special 427 Chevelles, which all were kings of the street. But today, we will be discussing a more refined cousin of the Chevrolet Chevelle, one that brought a combination of class and big horsepower that became truly an icon of the era. And today, we will be discussing the legendary 1970 Oldsmobile 442 W30. But first, a quick message from this video's sponsor, Car Vertical. Car Vertical is an online vehicle history platform that allows you to pull back the curtain and truly see what the potential car you might be purchasing is hiding. Let's say, for example, you found a Craigslist deal on a Challenger that is just a little too good to be true. Well, in just seconds, you can pretend to text your wife and put in the VIN number of the car and get a detailed report that shows all the things that you would want to know before buying it, like owner history, real mileage calculations, title status, and even in this case, a pretty bad accident that totaled the car. So if you're looking to buy a car soon, then go to the link in the description below to save 10% on your first car vertical vehicle check by using the code rare cars. The insignificant price of one car vertical report could end up saving you thousands when purchasing your next car. And thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring this video. The Oldsmobile 442 began life in 1964 as part of the first generation of GM's A body designation and was an optional package for the Olds F85 and Cutlass models. The 442 designation itself was born out of competition and rivalry within GM's ranks after the high performance Pontiac GTO gained massive success and pop culture fame. This forced Oldsmobile to make a hasty response to add a little bit more performance under the hood of their Cutlass. This task was given to a team led by performance car enthusiast and engineer John Betts, who would also later design the Toronado, and he was aided by Dale Smith and engineer Bob Dorsheimer. An interesting note about the 442 was that the 442 term was actually named not because of the engine size, but because of the combination of a four barrel carburetor, a four speed manual transmission, and a dual exhaust system. These early muscle cars weren't the most powerful in GM's lineup, but they offered better handling, suspension, and engine packages, which made more power over the base F85 and cutlasses. And they gave muscle car guys another option in the horsepower wars, that were a little bit outside of the norm. And fast forward two years to 1966, and the Oldsmobile A-body platform was given a facelift, as well as added power with the introduction of the W30 engine package. That gave the Olds 442 the most power to date, with a 350 horsepower, 400 cubic inch Oldsmobile engine. The W30 package was a project by Oldsmobile to transform the Cutlass 442 into a successful high horsepower monster that itself as a project started in secrecy in 64 and essentially sprung onto the scene virtually out of thin air with just 50 W30s being released in 1966. The W30 was now Oldsmobile's secret weapon. It just needed some more fine tuning to be perfect. And when 1968 rolled around, that fine tuning started. The Oldsmobile 442 graduated by this time into its own model. This was the first year that the famous second gen of the GMA body and the W30 442 would carve its own way into the world. The second generation of the A body was given a much shorter and sculpted body, with fenders that were widened for more tire clearance, and its three inch shorter wheelbase gave the 442 a much more aggressive looking roofline that was now more in tune with the later 60s styling cues that existed at the height of the golden era of muscle cars. Oldsmobile maintained the 442's four headlight design 
that framed a narrow grill. Out back, the car would be given a more sloped rear end with taillights placed into the bumper itself, and the 442 would actually receive minor facelifts every year until the entire next body design. The W30442 was given a ram air intake, which was a dual snorkel air cleaner that led to special under bumper air scoops with hoses connecting them. The 1970W30 specifically was also given one of the coolest hood options of the era with a fiberglass hood that actually had functional air scoops. They also were able to keep the weight down by adding bright red plastic inner fenders, which have actually became somewhat of a telltale sign for these 70W30 cars, and people will even copy these on the clones. But lastly, they also included an optional rear spoiler that would tie off the new sloped back design with something a bit more aggressive. But the real final touch, the pisto resistance, if you want to call it, of the W30 was under the hood. As the perfect example of the statement, no replacement for displacement. For these new W30s, Oldsmobile stuffed a 455 cubic inch V8 under the hood. And this 455 wasn't just granddad's old 455 either. No, it featured a low restriction air cleaner, an aluminum intake manifold, a special top end package that consisted of new heads, a different distributor, a better camshaft, and a bigger four barrel carburetor that when put together, pumped out an underrated 370 horsepower on paper, which in actuality made much closer to 400 horsepower and about 500 foot-pounds of torque, which were absolutely monstrous numbers. Behind the 455 Olds sat a Muncie four-speed manual transmission that was given a Hearst shifter and a set of 391 rear gears out back that were housed in an aluminum rear end that saved 18 pounds over the standard iron pumpkin rear. These things combined gave the W30-442s the ability to rock the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds at just over 100 miles an hour with a top speed of around 130-ish. But what truly sets the W30 apart from many of the other performance trim muscle cars of the era was that Oldsmobile chose to maintain its classic interior refinement with this high-speed brute. This was a novel idea compared to the typical muscle car doctrine of the time that saw stripped-down interiors that were focused on performance. The W30 combined power with a comfortable and luxurious interior that only Oldsmobile themselves could offer. The gauge cluster was wrapped in a wood grain dash that added a little extra class for the driver to look at. Now, the interior was obviously a bit similar to a Chevelle as it had the same chassis and rough dimensions, but Oldsmobile did way more with that blank canvas of space that they had and actually made this entire interior so much more luxurious and comfortable than any of the other GM products in this size range. In fact, at the time, the Oldsmobile 442 was probably the nicest intermediate interior that GM even offered. And it wasn't just about the luxury or the power. 442 W30 in specific was about the combination of both. It was fast, it was comfortable, and it overall provided the muscle car experience for the type of buyer who had a little bit more money in his pocket that wanted something to show for it. You have to think, the buyer for the 442s and even the W30 cars specifically was a very different buyer than the guy who might have bought a Chevelle SS or even a GTO for that matter. The guy who owned a W30 might have been a seasoned professional working at a firm somewhere who needed something that appeared high class to go meet with potential clients and whatnot. But deep down inside him was still that 20 year old kid who after a bad day at work would just bury his foot in the throttle to forget all about it. The W30 itself proved to be a relative success for Oldsmobile, but there weren't that many of them made. They tried to keep them a bit more exclusive and they didn't sell a ton of them and also part of the reason being was that they were more expensive. And again, the people that were trying to go fast, lots of times were trying to go fast on the cheap. So these better equipped and arguably better built Oldsmobiles 
kind of got kicked to the side for the budget-savvy crowd, with the highest production year of the W30 being 1970, with just over 3,100 cars built. And a total of 8,650 W30s were made between 66 and 72. The reason I mentioned the other years here, though, was following the 72 model year, the new colonnade body style came out with a body that was to have this new reinforced roof in anticipation for new government rollover standards. They also gave this new car much longer doors and did away with many of the high performance engine packages that the second generation Olds was built around. These changes came in as the gas crisis and emissions regulations were rolling in, and they inflicted a heavy toll on power, performance, and the overall opinion of the W30 package cars. This caused the beginning of the low performance era, and it created an environment that caused the 442 to now just be reverted back to another option for the Cutlass, as the W30 was now just again a trim package that remained a shell of its former self. The late 60s and early 70s 442 W30s will always be regarded as a true gentleman's muscle car, and as one of the most refined muscle cars of the era, and it will still continue to be highly sought after for the guys who want something a little bit different than the norm. But now I ask you this question. If you had to choose between a W30 442 or a Cobra Jet Mercury Cyclone for your upscale street muscle, which car would you choose? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching another episode of our Rare Cars documentary series. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.